Hey guys, what is up? Hope you're all are having a great day. Happy to be back with another really special episode. This episode will be featuring Erica Stoner, one of the staff instructors at Pronghorn Resort who works under Jeff Ritter. They did, they've been very gracious in hosting me out here. And so this was a very fun video to do. And so if you guys would like to see more like this, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help me out. And with that being said, I'll introduce Erica to the video. Hello everybody, I hope you enjoy our match and I appreciate Kyle having me on as a guest. Yeah, it's uh, it was a really fun round and uh, she definitely came to play. And this was a fun course to really get, to really try to get used to. We did get one round on this beforehand as a bit of a practice round. And uh, yeah, this was a really fun course. It was kind of a desert landscape with uh, the greens and fairways really watered down. So it was really good. and. The greens were awesome, and so you really didn't have any excuse if you missed any putts. So it was definitely a really fun test of golf. All right, here I am. It's 105, hit a little gap wedge in. I was a little nervous on the first hole. Yeah, she's a little nervous on this commentary too, but she's getting she's getting the hang of it. Bear with me. <laughs> no, I was I was definitely not very good at it for a while. I'm still not amazing at it, but yeah, you can see where our balls ended up there. I pulled mine a little bit left, and she was already off to a great start with about an eight-footer. So I'm trying to get up and down and not already having my butt kicked after the first hole. So this was a, a, definitely a bit of a tough shot because I really had to f I had two choices. I had to either bump and run it like I did there or try to get under the ball and fly it down to the base of the green and get the spin. And... So that, that worked out pretty good right there, and this is definitely, and I've noticed as I've been playing more golf, I have been able to continually improve my game around the greens. And speaking of that, you can see she's already on the board under par, so I really got to get going early. And so I'll knock this one in for a par as well. So Erica, what do you, tell me about how it's been um, working out at Pronghorn, working under Jeff Fritter and kind of the atmosphere out here. It's been awesome. I'm really fortunate and blessed to work under an amazing coach like Jeff. Longhorn is amazing. The town of Bend is great. Very active golf community. Yeah, that's what I noticed when I arrived here. There was definitely a lot of excitement around the course. I actually did a little exhibition here a couple days ago, and there were definitely a pretty good turnout. And it was good because I actually hit it straight, which was nice. That was a, It was a good change of uh, pace for me. And... Yeah, I'm also, there's a second course here. We're playing the Fazio here, and there's a second course, the Palmer, that I'm looking forward to. I mean, sorry, the Nicholas. I don't, I'm, I'm just not thinking straight right now. But, um, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to playing that as well. I've been told it's actually maybe even a little tougher than this course. And that would be, well, I can't wait for that. That's why it's strategic to play our match on this course. <laughs> yeah, she wanted me to feel a little better about myself and my abilities, so she put me on the easier course. And uh, yeah, I hit a pretty good shot here. I felt really pure. I hit a three iron. I probably should have hit a two iron. Probably would have got me home. But still in good position. You can see Erica in the left rough. Just advancing it up through the, green, through the fairway. And she actually has talked about wanting to do long drive. So we're trying to get her speed up. And I think right now she's, what did you get up to, 107 the other day? Yeah, about 107, 108. Don't <laughs> so, sell me short. <laughs> so she's starting to get the hang of it and learning how to really power through and finish her swing. She does a lot of knockdown shots with her with her clubs, and I, I had the same thing. And I remember when I first got started in the long drive, back. I had a very similar swing that was built for just purely golf. So it was definitely a process for me to kind of devolve my swing from that and turn it into more of a long drive home run swing. And I, I think there's a very good chance that she'll get into the 110 range, 115 range with some practice and some training. And something else that you guys might be interested to know is that we actually went to the same college, um, UCF. And uh, when did you graduate? Oh, tw 2019. 2019. So I, I didn't graduate. I just went there for a couple of years and then left. I think I, I left um, December 2018. So it was weird because we didn't really know each other beforehand, but we were going to the same school at the same time. So it's kind of funny how life's a flat circle, it appears. So... She'll knock that one in for her four, and so now, I mean, for her five, rather. And so now I have a putt for birdie, trying to even the score. And if you guys want to see a master class of putting, watch this. 
perfect. So that's how that's how you do it, guys. That's that's what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, I put on a putting exhibition as well. Yeah, we were we were both putting. Yeah, we were we were both, we were both putting like long drivers, so to speak. So now I'm all three, and you guys will notice I am hitting a lot of irons. This is because this course is definitely at elevation, so the irons are going to go a lot further than typical, and it's not really it's a much more of a target course, even though this was about 7,500, 7,600 yards, something like that. So that was a kind of a change up in strategy. However, stay tuned because I hit a couple drives later in this round that carried really close to 400 yards. So I definitely brought out the big stick a couple times when I needed it because there there was a par five at 687 yards and a par four over 500. So it was definitely needed at some point. But I was trying to be pretty conservative with what I was using off the tee to keep my ball in play. So now I have 152 yards with a 46 degree wedge. And once again, just trying to feather it up there and hit another pretty dreadful shot with my 46 degree and pulled it way left. And yeah, I actually got a pretty good kick off the side. She's nodding because she I wanted me to. This. She wanted me to mention this. She was really annoyed because I got this insane kick, and that's what I was watching when I what I was doing there. I was watching for so long because the ball was like at least seven or eight yards left of the green and hit, hit this like half pipe and ran like all the way down into the middle of the green. So <laughs> I think she did the same thing. Yep, I pulled it as well. So she's just trying to make me feel better about missing left. I didn't get the bounce though. Yeah, you were too far to the right. So funny enough, she's the one who's away, and uh, so she's got about looks like about a thirty-five footer for birdie, and, and uh, definitely a pretty good speed. Not the best line. You guys will see me here. So unfortunately, for whatever reason, that putt didn't record, but I had a lag putt just inside of that and pulled it left. So I had this left for par. Another brilliant putt. And yep, another. <laughs> I, I look back at this, and I, I'm typically pretty solid at short putts. And um, there's her consoling me a little bit. And so she's got a putt. I think this is you one under right now. Yes. Yeah. So this is to get the two up after only two after only three holes. And dead center. So yeah, off to a great start. And now in a hole four, 164 yards, a bit into the wind. So I'm trying to flight this one down a little bit. And uh, this isn't a hard hole. This is definitely a birdieable par three. You guys know how I am with par threes. I just par threes and I don't mix. But um, this was definitely a hole that I definitely felt like I could birdie if I hit a good shot. I left this one out a little bit short and to the right, and uh, kind of not the best shot in the world. And now Erica, the eight iron from 145 yards. And I think she feathers this one in there, leaves it out to the right a bit. Pretty much right where I hit it again, and uh, I think we're in a similar spot. So, have you been thinking about um, pursuing long drive more seriously in the next year or two? I definitely, especially I have a good mentor. You've helped me pick up some distance and some speed. <laughs> yeah, I think she. What did you start at? Like, were you like 102, 103 the other day when we did some speed training? Like 100, 99. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think, and so she got up to 108, and so that, and that's something for all for all you guys out there who are curious about whether or not you should pursue long drive. I would say if you're within 20 miles an hour of top end swing speed, it's worth looking into, because you're going to gain probably about three to four miles an hour of club speed, just by, just by hitting a longer club. So that's the first thing to look at, and then the second thing is, you got to kind of really take a close look at your swing. How compact is it? How "Quote unquote golfy is it? Is it? Can you tell that it's a swing that's been built for accuracy over distance? If that's the case, you might have a little more in the tank. Well, I know I yeah. get a lot. Of, I get these questions a lot of time on YouTube and Instagram. And for those wondering, I started out in my long drive career. My club speed was right at 140. I believe those of you who know Art Salinger, who's a pioneer in the sport of long drive, he happened to live really close by to me when I started long drive and when I was in Texas, and so I went to his shop." And I was topping out at about 212 ball speed. So I've gained about probably 20 miles an hour of ball speed over the years. And so it kind of gives you guys an idea of what you can expect with training and all that good stuff. So if you're, if you're touching 135, 130, at least 130, it's definitely worth giving a shot. And for women, if you're probably maybe 100, it's definitely worth looking into as well. Because there's, and with Erica here, you can tell a couple of things I want to point out to the people watching. 
you can tell how her swing is built for accuracy over speed and distance. And um, the biggest tell of that is kind of the abbreviated follow through as well as kind of, it's a very compact and consistent swing. And so what we're trying to do with her, we're trying to get her to unleash, turn off the governor of her swing. And that's it's something that takes time. It takes repetitions mentally and physically to get to that point. Um, but I, I'm very confident that after a couple months of training, she'll probably be 115 and maybe even hitting it by me. Who knows? <laughs> maybe your eight iron. Maybe. And uh, yeah, here this this just sucked. I, I thought I hit a good drive and was in a good spot, and I was literally behind pretty much the one tree that just you couldn't be behind. And this came really close to being a great shot, and it just uh, got hung up on that very edge of that slope, and it would have ran down. So you can see now I have that really, really fun putt down the slope. And I got to get this just over that crest and then let it filter down into the hole. And it did a pretty good job of it. But I must say, I was very impressed with how Erica was playing. I think you played one year at UCF? Yes. One year? Yep. And uh, yeah, she was so good that they kicked her off the team. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> um, but... No, she's she's been very she's been pretty scrappy and been able to score pretty well. We did have a match before this, I believe I alluded to. I won't say who won, who lost. But, it's very kind of you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we got a good idea of what her game was, and so it, it, this was definitely a really even match for for a very long time. And so now I think she's got about eight or nine feet left for par. And cans it. Boom. She's getting, she's getting pretty animated. Get used to it. <laughs> so now I got about probably three and a half, four feet left to clean up par. And uh, I think I'm two back. Yeah, dang, that sucks. Just to stay two back. So I made that and I believe we're on to hole six. Yep. This is another pretty cool hole. Bit of a creek that runs all the way at the left side. Just trying to get a two iron just over that bunker you guys can see out there. And put it right in the center of the fairway. And I know I mentioned this in an earlier video, but I've definitely been kind of moving back towards competitive golf, especially if I can keep putting the ball in the fairway like I have been. I think if I clean up the putts, I might not be too far off. So I'm, I've been considering it. And now we got Erica about to let one fly. We'll see about this one. This is a tough hole because the water comes in close if you hit it too far to the left. But if you were to hit a shorter shot off the tee, right you have way too long of an approach in. So I hit a little little baby draw driver. Yeah, I love how I've been the one giving the directions on how to play this course when she's been working here for like a little over a year and a half. I've been too busy working, not playing. Yeah, like she literally is probably, I she she teaches all day. It's insane. She, you, you, you've probably had like 15, 20 lessons in the last three days. It's been awesome. So, it's got to be great to be able to help people play better. It's especially very, very fulfilling. Yeah, especially as frustrating as this game is. So I hit a pretty good shot here. It was a bit downwind, so it's tough to hold the green. But and that was another thing. These these greens are really firm, so it's definitely tough to hold and um, you gotta make adjustments on the fly. And there she goes again following where I went. <laughs> it's it's honestly not a bad play because the Superintendent must have been having a really bad day because he put these pins in really tough spots. You can see the pin location on the, overhanging on the edge there. You can see Erica over there and me a little bit closer. And uh, it was a beautiful hole. That's why I decided to get some shots of it. So she's got about 48 feet and, thir and 13 inches. And uh, so we got about... Approximately. <laughs> exactly. So this is looking good. I was at, I, I'd already said great putt and... I couldn't. Oh my God! Look at, she missed it. I she was can't devastated. It. Couldn't believe it didn't go in. You can really tell she's very animated. <laughs> I don't know how she's gonna recover from that emotionally. So she'll knock that one in for a par, and now I have a chance to get back to only one back. And judging by how I've been playing earlier, I'm sure you guys know this is not going anywhere but dead center. And uh, something cool about Prongmore, there's like a, it's like a five mile drive to get to the course, so like in the middle of nowhere. But that's really, I think like that adds to its charm, so, you know, and I think um, it definitely makes it a much cooler place, and definitely a really awesome resort to come to, so if anyone's considering going, I highly recommend it, some really first-class golf, and 
yeah, just absolutely awesome course. And this has been a brutal hole for me. This is a 500 yard par four that plays back into the wind. So that's been, that's a fun hole. <laughs> and so I flared this one out to the right. And I think Erica gets a little bit of a pretty good head start. Well, actually 438. Well, she's playing pretty far back too. So I looked at the scorecard and she's playing like 6400, 6500, which is, that's a pretty meaty course. And uh, she's holding her own pretty good. I hit a peach there. Yeah, just a ni nice little slice. <laughs> <laughs> so, season position A1 here off the tee. This was actually a good shot. Yeah, she she was just trying to open the face up a little bit and just hit a kind of a scooter up there and keep right of the bunkers that were in the front left part of the green. And you can see she, she really liked it. Flexing those calf muscles. <laughs> Were you ever a ballerina once? Never. Because I would have thought you might have been after watch after looking at that. I don't have enough rhythm for that. <laughs> Let's see. So now I'm, I got a pretty good draw here. Um, because my hair. Oh, the hair getting, eating your hair. Yeah, I was getting I was getting some fiber, and uh, 157 yards and pretty good lie actually and a really good draw here. I'm able to kind of go at the screen a little more directly than I thought I might have been able to. And hit this one right at it. Caught it pretty hot, and I almost clotheslined myself running through those trees right there. I ca caught a piece of my hat and almost knocked it off, but that would have been hilarious if you guys got to watch me clothesline myself on a really thick branch and get knocked out. It would have been a good comeback if I could still win the match. So this putt was... I thought this putt would be a lot slower than it really was, and the second I hit it, I was like, perfect putt, Kyle. Way to really read the break. And so Erica, she's going to get to get a read off of that. She was almost in the exact same spot, as is a pretty pretty big recurrence. But she's, we've been hitting in pretty much the same spot over and over. So she's able to go to school a little more on this putt than I was. So it gets it just over that ridge, and it comes down pretty nicely. So, so tell everyone a little bit about your junior golf career. So give me some highlights on that. Um, Two-time Florida State champion. Um, academic All-American at UCF, played on the Florida Junior Tour, had some victories there, and just really loved golf, was fortunate to have parents who helped, you know, support my dream to play, and eventually it led to getting a college scholarship. So I really, just, golf is such a great game for young people to really develop and instill values into their life. So what kind of teaching philosophy do you have towards the game? I'd say it has definitely shifted because I was a player. I tried to make things as less technical as possible. So achieving good technique without manipulating your swing in a manner where you lose all of your natural flow and ability and rhythm. Yeah, I've always believed in the same thing. Because we actually both had a very similar thing happen. We went to our college and we just started struggling. And... You know, for whatever reason, we just weren't able to shoot the scores we were able to shoot as junior golfers. I think a lot of it was we started really focusing on our swing and trying to get technical and get a little more scientific, which is definitely works for a lot of people. Like Bryson DeChambeau has been doing a great job with, with that. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have a degree in physics, so that makes it tough for me to figure all that out. And I found I've had most success just kind of going off a of feel, you know. And that's something that... Uh, I think uh, a lot of people out there have found to be a similar experience. Like, it's definitely important to have some baseline mechanics that are solid, for sure. I also, but I do think at some point the game is an art form. I don't think it's a hard science. And I've watched a lot of the greatest players in the history of the game, and they always seem to have a slightly different way of playing the game. And I think that's kind of just about being an artist of the sport. And so. That's kind of how I've always been too. After, especially after college, just trying to figure, find my game again, and figure out how to score. So, one hundred percent. You notice the more you work on your swing, you can work out a lot of the good qualities that you had that made you, you know, a good ball striker. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yep, you guys, that was another solid putt. Except I left it short. So you guys know I'm I'm the king of hitting it straight at the hole and leaving it short. So another a really good lag putt from fifteen feet there. And now Eric to save her par. I think this would be, you, know, this a, you were in a really unique spot off the tee. You somehow found, this, you split it between the uh, bunkers in that high grass. So another exquisite putt there. I'm starting to get heated, heated with the putter. <laughs> yep, a little bit. We both were. 
And now here's the big one. This is a 687 yards, par five. And sorry for not having the shot tracer on. I don't know why it didn't come through. At least it wasn't like a 400 yard drive or anything. So it was only 398. So this went a little bit left. I hit it pretty good though. And uh, you'll see where I am. It was, let's just say this hole was quite an adventure for me. Now Erica back at 577 yards, about to bomb this one. A little club twirl. Don't even need to look at. She's picking the tee up and walking away. And she's uh, getting herself in position with the six iron. If you guys want to see how you can get it under the wind, check this shot out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I even hit the ball. It almost seems like you tried to play that off as um, as uh, with something you're doing on purpose. I was wind cheater. Yeah, it's the wind cheater. That's for sure. And so here, I, this is probably my first really crazy shot of the day, just a little bit into that fescue. So I needed to, I, you'll notice I took a very, very high club for this kind of distance. And that's because I, I was, that little bush there was kind of in my way. So I needed a lot of speed going through the ball so that I could make sure it didn't grab the, the shaft of the club and twist the face. I caught this just a bit heavy. Luckily, I'm in perfect position, plugged up against the lip of the bunker. You guys will see that shortly, but first we'll have Erica from 83 yards with a 60 degree wedge. Just trying to float it in there. And that's a thing of beauty. I think this I think you hit this like six or seven feet, just oh, a little yeah, over the I hole. I remember this one now, right over the right over the pin. Yeah, she's putting a lot of pressure on me. Yeah, you can see she's happy with that one. And now here's my perfect layup here putting it in a perfect position off the hole. And this was like a 30 yard plug shot. So I just, yeah, took a nice easy swing at it. Just kind of chipped it out there. And that looks so stupid. I don't know why I was doing that, but I, I was trying to get it to get on the green. It was like on the front edge and it just climbed up there because if it was like two feet short, it would have rolled back down the false front. So I was about as good as I could have done right there because if I took a lower loft- shot. Well, if I took a lower loft to club, it wouldn't have gotten over. There was quite a lip there, so I had to contend with that as well. And if you guys are ever wondering, one of the biggest tips I can tell you guys for playing a really bad plugged live bunker shot, a lot of people try to hit the ball directly, and that's not a good idea because what's going to happen is one of two things. You're going to thin it, or the ball is going to just go nowhere because you mishit it. What you guys have to do is accept the fact that the ball is going to have no spin and play it like a chunk and run. Essentially what you want to do, find a spot about an inch and a half to two inches behind the ball and just drive the head of the club as hard as you possibly can into that spot and the ball should pop up as long, if, granted you swing fast enough. So really beautiful shot here, flare this one out way to the right. And I just couldn't figure this hole out. This hole been giving me problems all week. And it's into the wind too, so this is, I would honestly say this could probably be the hardest hole in the course, at least in my opinion. So, Erica, after a really solid front nine, is going to be, she had, hit a great shot up the middle there, and uh, just in the right center of the right center of the fairway. And so now you can see here I have uh, a pretty, really tough uh, shot out of this thick grass and crap. I had to hood the club a little bit because I didn't really have a backswing unless I did that. So I'm kind of taking a rip at it. Getting used to the trees. Yeah, probably have some ticks on me. I don't even know. <laughs> And so she's in pretty good shape here, 160 yards with a six iron. And uh, I think this is another really, really solid shot. I'm just kind of roping it in there. That ball was above the feet. Just turn it a little too much. Yeah, so are there Whoa. any tips you would like to give the people out there since you're a master instructor at the young age of 23? Are there <laughs> any tips here you'd like to give the people watching about how to shoot good scores? Oh, man. I would say to really isolate your practice in terms of technical aspect of it versus playing break up your practice on the driving range so whatever things you're working on in your swing and those components split up your time do 30 minutes where you're working on your technique another 30 minutes going through your your on course routine visualizing playing shots because i see a lot of people the the more they want to work on their game the less they get away from playing so always stay playing golf being on the course and those will translate into lower scores and don't neglect your short game. Wow. I need to start working on that last one. <laughs> but, no, I agree. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I made as a junior golfer was I didn't play enough golf. I always spent time on the range, in the short game area, 
And I was really great at practicing golf, but I never became great at playing golf. And I think that was probably one of my biggest problems was that I was never in that position where I instinctively knew what to do on the golf course. So I think that's something that everyone can work on, and it's something that people can really improve very quickly on. So that's, that's definitely a lot of good insight there. She definitely knows, knows what she's talking about. And uh, yeah, I, I, I found that to be true. So now in hole 11, three over, 191 yards, 46 degree wedge in hand. I just don't want to go long on this hole. And there also is some water on the right. So, and would you know it, they put the pin on the right edge of the green, so. Yeah, he was having a bad day, the superintendent. Yeah, superintendent just, he must have really been annoyed at something. And uh, so I pulled this one a little bit left. Not a great shot, but definitely a solid miss, to say it for sure, so. And uh, Erica, one over. With 168 yards, and she has a six iron hand. And yep, pretty good shot. Just pulled it a little bit. I and was leaning. Uh, yeah, she's being she's playing safe. You know, she's staying away from the water, trying, trying to protect the lead. Yeah, she's nursing. I think she got a one shot lead right now. So, that, and one of the things I will say about pronghorn that was really difficult was the the fairways were so tight that it was almost, you really had to be just confident over the shots. And that's something else I would say to people, especially people who struggle with chipping around the green and especially off of tight lies, you'd be amazed at the power of visualizing that shot going well for you right before you hit it. You'd be amazed at how well that does and it translates into actually hitting that shot. Because I think a lot of times as golfers, we have to, we're obviously going to perform within our abilities first off, but beyond that, I think one of the biggest things that determines our level of performance is the story we tell ourselves in our head of what kind of golfer we are and how we're going to perform in our story of, in, in golf. And <laughs> yeah, she she was um, she started getting a little annoyed. <laughs> Didn't even tap it in. Yeah, I gave her that. I was I was being generous. You know, I, I felt she had a pretty good chance of making that comebacker. So now a part of all of a sudden even the score. And rolled it in. It'd be great if I could make every putt like that. So now still three over, hole 12, and finally kind of a hole I can really attack. And so pulling out the big stick and uh, letting it rip. Called this one way on the toe, but it came back nicely. I am using the Maverick driver. I know you guys, I get a lot of questions about that. This was actually my first round using the Maverick club head. I've been using the Epic Flash long drive head the last couple months, but... I must say I am highly impressed with the Maverick head. It's the gear effect there was incredible because that ball deserved to be 50 yards right of the trees, and uh, in a different golf course. But the gear effect pulled back, which is really great. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend that club for sure. So Erica is hitting a good shot down here. Looks like she hit it down the middle. My sawed off driver again, and you're one down by the way. Take it. I am. Mm -hmm. Well, good. I got I got a little excited. I thought I was even par. I thought I was pulling even with you. And uh, so 164 yards left, and she's got a 7-iron in hand, a little bit uphill. And uh, she's trying to put it... Well, where are you trying to put this one? Um, just trying to hit the green at this point. Still protecting my lead. <laughs> yep, that's how you I was it. in between clubs, and whenever I take uh, speed off my swing, I tend to pull it. So I tried to hit the 7-iron. Didn't work out. Yeah, and you can see me, perfect position here off the tee. Don't have any issues at all. Just a couple trees in my way and a rock to my left and some fescue to my right. So I did have a pretty good lie actually. So I was able to hit it over the tree, but unfortunately I caught the top part right of the toe and uh, that caused me to not hit it very far. And so I had about a 20 yard chip left here off the fairway and a bit of a difficult shot here. You kind of had to hit into the bank and let it scoot up onto the green. And I will say, I'm looking at this playback. The last couple holes, I've been really excited about how much my chipping's improved. And I would attribute this, I remember these two shots in particular. I was thinking, I was making, I was just trying to think positive thoughts and, you know, clip it right off the fairway. So Erica with her explosion bunker shot. Yeah, this is a tough spot, tough leave. Green runs down, way downhill past. So if you hit it past the pin, it's going to roll down off the green. Yeah, you can see you're playing a very safe shot there. I mean, literally, if the, if that ball rolls four feet, four or five feet past the hole, um, it'll roll off the green completely. And so that's probably the biggest defense of this par five. You just got to really be careful on the greens. And with a great up and down there, so she gets to even par. And uh, 
So now I'm in a really tough position. Now. I really have to make this putt to keep pace. But I was feeling good over this putt. You know, I had a pretty good beat on the read here. And so I was just going to try to make a good stroke and let whatever happens happen. And knocked it in. So good solid four there. And now on to hole 13, two over. And it's a 472-yard hole into the wind. But once again, there, it gets really tight up there. So I'm just hitting a two iron. Flare just went out to the right a bit, but luckily the wind knocked it back pretty good. So I did catch the right edge of this fairway. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm noticing I hit so many fairways. You guys are giving me crap as I deserved for, I think I hit one fairway on my Whistling Straits video, which you guys should definitely check out. Um, and that's what happens when you're trying to hit driver on one of the toughest courses in the world. That's what and it's 40 miles an hour wind. And so Erica hits a pretty good shot up here up the right side, I think. Yep. Um, I, this might have gone in the rough, I think, just a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, and so I'm on the right edge of the fairway, and I, you'll see I choke down the, closer to the, the metal of the shaft here, just trying to knock the, knock the ball down. And that's another piece of advice I, I could give you guys. If you guys are having issues with wind, one of the biggest things you want to do is swing slower. But the issue with swinging slower is it can throw off your tempo. So the way you fix that while still swinging slower, if you grip down on the club, You'll, length, you'll shorten the effective length of the club, which will cause your club speed to drop, but your tempo can remain the same. So that's another little tip if you guys want to figure out how to hit, flight it in the wind. And so I did remember correctly, Erica's just in the right rough here. But I think she pulled it a left a bit, and I had a really, really tough shot here. I was pretty shocked this didn't kick down to the, the green. So I had another situation where I kind of had to fly this all the way to the to the um, edge of the green, and that checked up big time. I didn't think it would check up like that, so I was a little annoyed there, as you can tell. And uh, got Erica in the bunker once again. I think this is That's two holes in spot. a row. <laughs> she's she's she loves the beach, so. Yeah, I think it's an awkward awkward bunker shot. It was. I didn't get to see the lie. I yeah. didn't know if it was a tough lie or not. But really good shot there. She's definitely playing pretty well at this point, and. Uh, so now I got about four or five feet left for my par, and uh, just trying to once again just try to keep pace and keep keep plodding along. Yeah, another good putt. At least I didn't miss it left this time. You're consistent, <laughs> consistently missing. Yeah, at least I'm consistent in something. And now Erica with about an eight footer to save par. So and she cans it, so her lead grows again. So now I'm back to three over, and this is an ironable hole. I trying to drive the green with my four iron here and uh this shot was right at it and you guys will see in a bit if that carry if that was about two yards to the left this probably this could have gone in for an albatross and that would have been a good way to turn turn the tide of things you guys will see in a little bit erica playing smart with her four hybrid trying to make sure she's in play here and uh, I can tell you're trying to hold on to a lead now. You're trying to uh, make sure you don't do anything stupid. I'm so, playing defense. Was this something you learned as a competitive golfer growing up, how to play the game? Yeah, just being conservative. And once I have the lead, maintaining it. And also, I my swing used to be out of control. I used to swing too fast, way rapid tempo. So I spent so much time trying to tone down my swing, as you can see with that abbreviated follow-through. <laughs> but I'm more consistent. Now I just need... To if I want to do long drive, I need to remove those governors, like you said. Yeah, I mean, there's no one better at making people inconsistent with their swings than me. So I'll, I'll definitely, we've, you know, as I said earlier, we've probably already gotten her about two or three miles an hour faster, and I think by the end of the week we'll be probably at least another mile or two faster. The hardest thing for me in this match was not letting it get in my head that I'm playing with Kyle Berkshire and I'm going to swing out of my shoes. Yeah, she was a little intimidated. Could you tell? Because she's only beating me, beating me by three three shots, but um, no, I mean, and as I said in an earlier video, you know, about someone in a match with me, like the the biggest thing, if you can just play your own game and stay in your game, you're gonna have a very good chance to beat me. And you know, hopefully that'll be a little different after a few months of me really, really getting serious about practicing golf and getting better. And he's uh, too humble. He's got an incredible game. Yeah, I mean, at times, I guess you know, if you pick and choose certain spots. And uh, so, yeah, that was a very, very not so good four. So now Erica to save her par.
Safe. Boom. She's been making a lot of the putts she needs to make down the stretch, and uh, got to give her props on that begrudgingly. And now on the hole 15, pretty short par four, only 515 yards. <laughs> it actually plays pretty short though. Um, and, and I, I'm glad I have a witness because the first round we played, I actually hit probably one of the longest drives I've ever hit in my life on this hole. It was ridiculous. And yeah, I had like, I think I had like 20 yards left on the hole, but it was like 25, 30 miles an hour downwind and downhill. So that's definitely a recipe for distance. And Erica putting this one to play as well and just being being safe and keeping it between the sticks. And uh, so she's, I'm really impressed. She's really putting together a great round. Like. Just so you guys know, she's playing from the rust tee. So these are like the third furthest back tees. And I think the course rating for the women back there is like 77, 76. So she's currently playing right around a plus three, plus four handicap level. I will say it is pretty winless. So the scoring conditions were pretty good. When we played a couple Thanks days ago. Thanks for the ago, props. I appreciate it. I gave them when they're earned. And um, yeah, like a couple days ago, it was much windier and it was T definitely tougher to score so our scores were a little higher and I thought I had a good shot here but it took a crazy bounce and little that I know actually came up short so I need to learn how to hit it further and uh, so now I got a pretty tricky chip in retrospect I probably should have putted this but hindsight's 2020 and you can get you guys can see the sun already setting so we've been so busy I've been really busy with YouTube and editing she's been coaching all day long we didn't get out till four o'clock and you guys can imagine carrying a track man around a camera and ugh, dropping another <laughs> bomb to get to even par. But uh, you can imagine the rounds go pretty slow. So in the next couple holes, it will get pretty dark, but I think it's still pretty. It'll still be pretty entertaining. Um, just maybe lighten the brightness on the display monitor a bit, and that might help. I Unless you want to. I lost his rangefinder too. That yeah. that took some time. <laughs> yeah, we had to go back. She lost it on this hole, I think, too. So we had to go back and get that. Um, so now I got a pitching wedge, and this you guys are gonna laugh pretty hard at us when you have to, in a couple minutes here. So you'll notice the distance and then the carry. Oh. So she, she, yeah, she just remembered. So she lasered the green for me, and I lasered the green for her. We both lasered. You can see the tree out there. We both lasered the same tree that was like 40 yards short of the green, and I remember. I played this hole before. That was the worst part. So I, I knew what club I hit before. It was a nine iron downwind, and I came out there with a nine iron. She's like, "Yeah, you got 162 yards." Like, "Oh, okay, nine iron. That's not gonna work." So that's the tree right there. We lasered that tree, and so we're both like 30 yards short of the green. I just felt bad. I, I felt better about it that I didn't shoot both of our distances. Yeah, we we with messed we messed up both um, shots for each other. So it, it kind of evened out. So it was a nice little chipping contest. And uh, I thought I hit a good shot here. just didn't scoot up the way it should have. And uh, so Erica's got a chance to build on her lead even more. And so, yeah, she's going to try to chip this one in or scroll it over the green. I don't know which one it is, but she does a little bit better than me. Still a bit short, but not too bad. Now I'm trying to save par and stay in it, make a good stroke. And at this point, it was starting to become pretty dark, as you guys can tell by the, the um, camera. So it was getting tougher to see the hole. So that is my excuse for hitting bad putts from here on out. Well, it wasn't dark earlier on in the round. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, she's uh, she thinks she's all high and mighty because she, she's doing well right now against me. So I'll have to bring her back to the driving range and see if she can outdrive me with um, my 8-iron. All right. Please don't. <laughs> Let me enjoy this. So, yeah, she... Pull this one a little bit, so she's back to one over. I think I'm five over at this point, something like that. So I, I honestly have to say, this is a hard course. Like the rating was like 76.2, so you know I'm still playing pretty close to scratch golf here. And down hole 17, letting it rip at the driver. This has two greens, so this was a pretty interesting hole. I think they had the green on the right this time. Mm -hmm. And so this is actually a great line, and uh, it'll go. You'll see me go into the bunker and. If you guys want to see me slip and fall on my ass, you're going to be enjoying that in a couple in a couple minutes here. It's fantastic. <laughs> she really enjoyed it. And so now Erica, same deal with the driver. A little bit left, but I think she still should be all right. Put it in a good spot for her to attack the hole. And so I think, yeah, 104 yards with a 50-degree wedge. And uh, she can really start turning on the jets here and try to put it even further under par. 
So tell me one of your best memories with golf. I would love to hear. I'm sure a lot of people would like to hear something like that. Oh, I would probably say meeting Tiger Woods. Really? Yeah. I spent a lot of time um, just around <laughs> golf. <laughs> there it is. There's the fall. <laughs> That's funny. I'd say competitively, you know, winning some tournaments, but I was also, I caddied a lot during college, and I got to caddy out at Isleworth in Orlando for a bunch of celebrities and athletes, and it's just a really cool experience. So would you say when you met Tiger Woods or when Tiger Woods met you? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about perspective. It is. I would say I met Tiger Woods. Yeah, I think everyone says that. Um, so yeah, I have a, about a five, six footer here to get make a birdie and climb back to four over, and uh Rolled it in. So I love how I'm playing really well now that no one can see my game. Wow, and now you can good. really see the, the darkness kind of coming back in. So I wish you guys could have seen this hole um, a little bit more clearly. But um, this is a bit of a downhill dogleg left par 5. And I tried hitting my long drive driver off this during our round earlier. And I got it to like 100 yards off. But it took me, th it took me three tries to get it in the fairway. So playing a little safer here. Erica pushed this one right a little bit. That was a and, solid uh, off swing. Yeah, she a little uh, knocked down. I was protecting the lead. There's water <laughs> yeah, left on this hole. Yeah, she's clinging to a three-shot lead. So now this was probably my best shot of the entire round. Um, hit it 244 yards and a seven iron in, and this thing was right at it. And and uh, yeah, I, I started talking to it, and this thing. We'll have to. I won't spoil it, but you guys will see where it ended up landing. Well, I, I guess you can't see where it landed, but. Um, if you can see Erica there, she's in the bunker. <laughs> she's pretty hard to see, but... I can't even see it. Yeah, she, I see a little white blip. Yeah. So she's hitting her six iron up to the middle of the fairway there. And I love how I zoomed in as if anyone can see where that ball's going. And so she's got 82 yards left here, the third shot, 60 degree wedge, just trying to feather it in there and uh, finish up a really solid round. So she hit a pretty solid shot here and um, knocked it pretty close. We were both really close. Good. You guys will actually see right it up here, um, about 15, 20 feet away. And uh, so yeah, that was probably one of my best shots I hit all day. And so I got about a 20 foot of the eagle. You guys can't see it, but I did leave it short. So that's what you can expect. So I knocked that in, I ended up shooting 75. So Erica, I think just has to four putt. So let's see if she can, see if she can do that. I'm and, capable uh, of many things. Yeah, if only we could see what a, you were doing. Four putt is in my wheelhouse. But I think she knocks that one up to a couple feet and taps it in for 73. And so uh, and here's that'll do it for this match. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I want to thank Erica for coming on and showing everyone how it's done on the golf course. Of course. Thanks for having me. It was a wonderful time beating your butt. Yeah, I didn't enjoy getting beat too much, but it was definitely fun playing. And uh, So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.